Well, good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's X Talks webinar. Today's talk is entitled, When's the Right Time to Get an EQMS? My name is Ryan Muse and I'll be your X Talks host for today. Today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes and this presentation includes a Q&A session with our speakers. Now, the webinar is designed to be interactive and webinars work best when you're involved. So please feel free to submit your questions and comments for our speakers throughout the presentation using the questions chat box and we'll try to attend to your questions during the Q&A session. This chat box is located in the control panel which is on the right hand side of your screen. And if you require any assistance along the way, you can contact myself at any time by sending a message using the same chat panel. At this time, know that all participants are in listen-only mode, and please note that the event will be recorded and made available for streaming on xtalks.com. At this point, I'd like to thank Qualio, who developed the content for this presentation. Founded in 2012, Qualio is the first cloud quality management software for all life sciences companies. Medical device and pharmaceutical companies need a secure and scalable quality management system with the flexibility to support their evolving needs. Qualio meets that challenge by cutting through the complexity to optimize and automate critical quality processes. The remote first Qualio team is distributed across North America and Europe. Now I would like to introduce our speakers for today's event. Eric has over 25 years of experience in quality assurance, records management, and training and development within the pharmaceutical industry. His work experience includes CGCP, CGMP compliance, regulatory agency audits, IRB audits, sponsor audits, investigative site audits, internal system audits, root cause analysis, trial master file records management, source data collection and review, SOP development, and staff training. William is a senior biotechnology professional with over 20, sorry, 15 years experience in biopharmaceutical manufacturing. He is competent in the manufacture, testing, certification, and use of viral vectors and expanded autologous bone marrow derived human mesenchymal stem cells. These are for use in early phase one and two clinical trials. His relevant experience includes basic molecular biology techniques, cell culture, manufacturing process development, and qualification of quality control assays. And Meg has 10 plus years as a quality assurance, regulatory affairs, and compliance professional with a range of cross-functional skills and experience spanning nonprofits to startups. Meg helps companies adapt to and master new and complex subject material with organization and attention to detail. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hand things over to our first speaker for today, Meg Sinclair. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you, Ryan. So I'm so honored to be here to discuss with you when the right time is to get an EQMS. Our agenda for today is going to cover the fundamentals of what is an EQMS, going into the EQMS decision, and then talking about the optimal timing and the why behind that timing with some real case studies. I hope you find this webinar to be informative on your journey in EQMS world. A little bit about Qualio. As Ryan introduced us, we are the number one cloud-based quality management system for life science companies. Our promises are to be easy to use, to scale with you, to be fast to set up, we're committed to our customers and we want to create that connected ecosystem. So before we dive in too much, it's worth taking a couple minutes just to break down what we mean by an EQMS and the benefits of what one can provide for your business. So some of the options for managing a quality management system include paper, spreadsheets, other adapted tools, or an EQMS. I'm sure Bill and Eric have had their hand in some of these systems over the years, and we'll have lots of insights to share as we discuss these going forward. An EQMS is a system that's gonna digitize the core functions and components of a modern quality management system, including document management, training, and control of quality events like CAPAs, NCRs, and change control. That ease of use, scalability, and commitment to customers ties all of those things together here at Qualio.
Here you can see how a typical QMS is laid out within Qualio, and this is a snapshot of what a document library might look like, where you might have your procedures, policies, and other records stored in a controlled environment. And here are the components of a modern EQMS and all its functionality, including interactive dashboards and reports, where you can gain actionable insights into quality events through self-serve reports for different processes, including information on those processes, like deviation, investigation, complaint, audits, CAPAs, um, and others, which is really helpful when you go to put together your management review meetings. Um, configurations is another key component of a modern QMS. Easy configuration is going to help you adapt to your existing business processes and quickly integrate existing business applications. And another key component is audit trail trails. So having robust audit trails demonstrates that GXP compliance with detailed audit trails capturing every event in a process, including execution of the signatures, tax cre task creation, and assignment, and more. So why do business in an why would a business buy an EQMS? Here are some of the reasons um, customers might consider you know, eliminating the time-consuming manual paper-based EQMS, being able to scale and grow um, and get to market more quickly, and then unlocking centralized control and visibility for that continuous improvement. Bill and Eric, can you think of any reasons why your businesses have moved to an EQMS? Yeah, no, Meg, thanks for the opportunity to chime in here. In addition to all the points that you mentioned <clears throat> about eliminating the time-consuming manual and paper-based options, you know, we think that it was important that we also gain more visibility into our operational readiness and efficiencies within our manufacturing company. And, and that had several, several purposes. That allowed us to assure uh, potential customers and collaborators, as well as maybe potential uh, uh, partners of mergers and acquisitions, that we were operating within a state, uh, a state of control. And it also really um, allowed us to have the, the flexibility and the ease to go back and look at all the individual attributes of the quality system in a in a one uh, centralized location uh, with easy, like you mentioned, um, uh, dashboards that at the touch of a finger, uh, a mouse click could actually give us uh, information about how many people were trained and uh, or still needed training. Eric, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I think you've covered that very well <laughs> at this time. Great. Thanks, Megan. Thanks. So what does EQMS adoption look like in our current year of 2022 as we're closing out? Businesses invariably see better results when they go with an EQMS. And our latest trend report shows how, quality, how life science businesses assess their own quality and maturity based on the tools they use. Yet almost 40% of the industry is still mired in pa manual paper and spreadsheet-based systems. Bill, Eric, any ideas on why this might be happening? Do you want to take a stab at that first? Um, I, probably the, the, the first idea that comes to mind is just um, the idea that they've been working with paper for so long. Uh, they're used to that system. Uh, I'm, I imagine, of course, you know, cost, thinking about that, you know, how, how much is it going to cost to move out of this system? Our staff already knows how to do the paper. Uh, so just being comfortable, you know, with the old way is probably the first thing. Yeah, and you know, I think that uh, to expand upon what Eric said, you know, certainly um, large organizations, you, you tend to get a, a bit of institutional inertia uh, and an aversion to change where we've been doing it that way for five years, we've, we've, found, our, uh, we've, we've found our submissions, everything is working, so why do we want to go ahead and uh, upset the apple cart, so to speak, uh, right now? Ah, change, something that can be embraced, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, embracing that change and making the EQMS decision. So um, what does that look like? So there are different stages and when might an EQMS come in? So there's the startup phase where you're building evidence of product and market fit. There's that scale up when you're providing evidence of repeatable and scalable and profitable growth. And then there's the scaling where you're scaling that business continually. So I think right now, with those kind of definitions of what a startup is, what a scale-up is, and what a scaler is, 
we'd like to jump to a poll question. Ryan? Yes, so we have a poll question for audience members. This should be appearing on everyone's screen right now, and you can participate by selecting on any of the answers you see in front of you and then clicking Submit. The question that we're asking is, out of all of these three stages, when do you think is the optimal time to go digital and embrace an electronic quality system? Your answer options are startup, scale up, or scalar. We'll give everyone some time to consider their answer as it best applies to yourself or your businesses. The question again being out of these three stages, when do you think is the optimal time to go digital and embrace an electronic quality system? <clears throat> Looks like most of you have submitted an answer, so thank you very much for participating. Let's look at our results here. We have interesting split, 56% for startup, 44 for scale up, and then none of you have selected scalar. So thank you again, and back to you, Meg. Thanks, Ryan. I found that really interesting. We're gonna talk a little bit more um, as we go through the slideshow about when um, people might choose to do that and when the right time is. Um, so we'll put pause on that, but remember that 50-50 split between startup and starter um, and scaler. Um, so we talked about some reasons why people might go um, towards an EQMS. Here are some reasons why people, that I've heard why people wait on an EQMS. Um, which I think Eric kind of hit on earlier um, and Bill. So that they're stuck in their ways, that they're afraid of change, um, that we're complying on things and we're compliant, we don't need to change the way we're doing things. What are some other reasons you guys might have heard why people wait um, on an EQMS? Maybe that validation um, takes a long time. Was that your experience, Eric? When we would, yeah, as a matter of fact, that that was one of the uh, issues that came up when we were first looking for a system was trying to understand exactly the validation process, wondering, you know, do we have the the skills necessary in order to complete this? Because, you know, at at other positions there was a dedicated, you know, IT department who handled validations of all the different, you know, programs. Uh, so that that was obviously even for myself wondering, you know, am, am I going to be able to do this? Uh, so that that was definitely something that came up in in the idea of uh, are we ready to move into this system? You know, one of the other, uh, you know, there's a minor point, but another interesting observation of when we made the switch from paper based to uh, EQMS was we realized along the way that there were some of the SOPs that we had always relied upon when we were paper based systems like the SOP on writing SOPs, the SOP on preparation of a batch production record, um, the the SOP on uh, signatures and aliases and, and what constituted a valid signature. And one of the little, and I don't want to say it was a struggle in the sense of a, a big struggle, but when we moved into the EQMS, it was sort of like, well, wait a minute, we don't need this at all. Uh, you know, it's all right there, it's captured. Uh, and, and that was an interesting uh, learning uh, for us because we realized that some of the most basic SOPs and things that we thought we had to do first before we could even write a control document were already embedded in the system. And I think, you know, um, uh, you know, one of the other things that really uh, got us to think about, you know, the, why people might be reluctant was sort of the, we had all, like you say, in those spreadsheets, we had spreadsheets on how we track personnel, who was trained, and you felt like you were really, uh, by entering that data, you kind of also got a reassurance that you're on top of it as a manager. Hey, my people are all trained on this SOP and they're all going to go in and do that procedure. And, and it took a little bit of um, convincing that, that that wouldn't be lost in when we transitioned over to the EQMS. That's great. It's nice to hear that you can embrace that change and get to streamline at the same time. I think that's a, a big selling point into making that transition. Mm -hmm. This is a um, wonderful quote from another Qualio customer, um, and then really illustrates that there may be an element of fear holding businesses back as well. Um, paper and spreadsheets are safe, they're dependable, dependable. Everyone in your business knows how they work. There's a natural comfort in falling back on those tools. Um, but if you choose a simple tool like Qualio, um, that's quick and easy to implement and for everyone in the organization to learn, <clears throat> it should go much smoother in making that change. 
on our next slide. Veering towards paper isn't something unusual or something to be ashamed of. Plenty of businesses continue to do it even in 2022. And these are some key factors that would make a business turn left instead of right at this point. Are there any other factors here, Bill, besides low capital, trying to take that one thing at a time approach and that compliance focus that you can think of that might steer people away from an EQMS? Yeah, you know, there's a couple other considerations that come into it. it not only um, uh, some of them, uh, the, the transition from, you know, preclinical into uh, early phase manufacturing and, and then scale up and then scale. Or, you know, a lot of it also has to do with, you know, how much of the uh, in-house manufacturing you're going to do at your own facility. Are, are you going to do it all, uh, whereas in a cell and gene therapy environment, it's kind of complicated. Are you going to make the plasmids be, or used to transduce or to make your lentiviruses? Are you going to make the lentivirus that will be used to make your cell product? And your cell product is what you're going to get there. You know, for different, because Expression Therapeutics had a very rich pipeline of multiple products and we wanted to be able to do that, we decided to build in-house manufacturing capabilities that would enable us to do cell viral work and, and all the accessories. As such, it made a lot of sense for us to go ahead and make the investment in the EQMS uh, because we were doing that all. You know, somebody who was gonna maybe do one aspect but outsource everything else might have a different uh, weighting on the, the desirability or the need. Uh, they, might, um, they might be able to say, you know, we can postpone that and, uh, you know, uh, till maybe more like the phase one scale up uh, boundary rather than maybe starting early like we chose to. Uh, is there anything that you want to add about uh, maybe why uh, there's a uh, reluctance to change? Um, I'll be honest, I think we've covered a lot of those areas. <laughs> yeah. I don't really have any other than what you've listed on your slide and what Bill has said at this time. Great. So let's talk about that timing. Um, a lot of businesses take that paper now, EQMS later approach. Um, and that's for businesses who are aware of the NEQMS and its benefits. They might have something like this um, as a narrative in their mind where this is their typical um, path that they're going to take in their journey. Um, and so they may wait until the scale up or the scaler to launch that EQMS. And as Bill said, depend, or yeah, depending on what they have going on, they may stick with that paper early in their startup days. So the optimal timing and why. Let's get into that. Um, feels like this needs a drum roll here. As soon as possible is the right time. And we'll go into why. Yeah, no, I, we, you know, listen, I think Meg, uh, we really wanna, uh, we wanna, we wanna stay categorically and without yeah. uh, reservation. We believe that the right time to get an EQMS is early at the time that you begin uh, manufacturing operations. And, and you know, the reason that we really think that is that um, it, it gives you the level of control um, that, you, that you need to have the operation. And it really does a, a good job with enabling you to be in that state of control and have a pulse on, on your operation. The other part about that is that, you know, you're going into this uh, as you, make your first clinical products and then also start to uh, scale them up and then transition. We think that it's important that you demonstrate the consistency uh, throughout the drug product development or the advanced therapeutic uh, medical products uh, from the early stages to the end. And, you know, having, there, there's risk of having it in paper. So if a key, a key document or a key experiment is not captured and then you get to the regulatory filings and you need to have that data, it's not there. Um, it's really hard to imagine how that would not be the how that would be the case in having an EQMS where everything is digitized and secured. Also, as we've gone through, as you generate volumes of information, just the ability to maybe do a quick search and find that rather than having to go into a, a spreadsheet or a, a listing of all your documents, uh, it really sells itself. We think. Uh, anything else, Eric? Uh, I was going to piggyback on, uh, again, being able just to do the one click and find all the documents that you want as opposed to, uh, you know, how we would have to go into 
uh, you know, a controlled access room with lots of filing cabinets, and then you have to try to dig through all of the different paperwork just to find that that one page you might be looking for in the middle of a batch record. And so this makes, obviously, it's just makes it so much easier in our world now. Yeah. Do you want to maybe mention uh, sort of like the, also the experience with auditing, <clears throat> that when an auditor comes to look at your records, uh, this is a whole new realm for us rather than going and getting binders and bring them in and pulling out cleaning records and log books. Um, it, you know, having it be there and you can share as much or as little or, or as you want using the EQMS. Eric, do you want to maybe add to that? Yeah, you can, uh, you're able to uh, assign different users to the, to the program itself and you, as Bill mentioned, you, you can give direct access to specific documents. Uh, if there's something that, you know, is definitely internal that you keep to yourself, you're in, your internal audits, for example, you know, you, you don't flag those documents uh, for availability to be seen. Whereas for the client that you've created that product, they're able to go in and look directly at their entire batch record and, and see from the beginning when you first sign the contract to the end, uh, you know, release testing and, and getting that product released. Everything is in one location. So you're getting rid of what we call the, the thump factor of where you came into a room for an auditor and thumped down all these huge binders and they had to try to weed through and you had to show them where things were. They're able to go right into the system and it cuts down on audit time uh, and, and you know the time that, that not only you're spending with the auditor but the time the auditor's you know spending at, at your facility. Yeah. I just have one more point to that. Not only to cut it down, I think it also, and to cut down, maybe that's the wrong way of really thinking about it. it. It allows the auditor to do their job and make the assessment that these are the findings, these are that you're in a state of control and things are right without having to schedule two or three days, which allows you then to have more, uh, more time in your facility. Because let's be honest, um, every time somebody comes to your facility for an audit, you're usually like, oh, there's, you know, there's two days lost. <laughs> Uh, yeah. If they go through all your records and you have to be available to, to come and answer all those questions, it typically entail in a routine audit. So, Terrific. Absolutely. So EQMS now, EQMS later. Um, I think we all hit on all those points. Of the more you can integrate now, the more ready you'll be later. And you can scale as you grow. Um, and from scale up to scaler, you'll have that EQMS platform to continuously improve on. So, so the processes in the end can create less effort. Um, system structures, those workflows, templates are already pre-built in the system. As Bill was saying, a lot of those procedures, you may not end up needing on how to manage all of those things when the system automates that for you. Um, and then less time manually building in time for managing all those binders and all those thumping of audit binders down um, gives you more time to focus on product, be on your production floor, managing other compliance projects. Bill, Eric, other things um, that make an EQMS easier? Yeah, no, you know, that's a really good point to all the ones that you mentioned. There was one little, um, almost sort of like a, an added benefit when we decided to uh, put the EQMS system in. Uh, as we were fortunate, we were still building out our manufacturing facility. And so in the very early plans for that, when, you know, right prior to us uh, deciding to go this route, it was like, all right, well, where are we going to put the, uh, you know, the controlled document storage room? What type of suppression systems do we need in there? How many, you know, fire cabinets do we maybe need? Um, and, and all that. And when we decided to put in the EQMS and have this be a cloud-based system, um, we, we didn't get rid of every piece of paper. We still have a few little bit, uh, a few pieces here and there. We really decided that, you know, we didn't need a big infrastructure managing paper. Um, we could probably get by with just maybe what a little bit more size in a closet uh, with one or two uh, fire uh, fireproof cabinets. So that was an additional benefit. It enabled us to to gain back some uh, from space in our facility design. Terrific. I think one thing we haven't mentioned here too is if there are remote teams at play. Um, having this cloud-based system makes this EQMS much smoother when you have multiple sites or people working remotely. Um, that's another added benefit to um, of making that smooth it. You know, smooth. you know, Megan, I gotta I gotta jump in there and add to that. We we built out and we're building and setting up during the pandemic, and and so 
that is a point that was not lost. While we were building the facility, as well as implementing the EQMS, our personnel were able to work remotely, uh, writing documents uh, and, and moving them forward that really cut down on the time that it took from you know uh, beginning of construction to our go live date uh, when the facility opened and then we had to start validating the equipment and things. And it wouldn't have been possible in a paper-based system to accomplish that because first of all, uh, due to the nature of the pandemic, obviously you wanted to have social distancing and eliminate, uh, or not eliminate, but lower the amount of people that were on site or in one area. And, and this really, it, 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 it almost seamlessly perfectly allowed us to work in that changing environment uh, without almost skipping a beat. Uh, Eric, do you want to add anything? Yeah, agreed. So we were able to, uh, you know, from from our previous world, it was uh, going through that, as you mentioned on previous slides, the, the time that it would take to get documents from creation to review and approval, and you're literally waiting for someone to find it on their desk and then finally look at it and get back with you. Here we could, we even made use of, of you know, Microsoft Teams and that we were able to do breakout groups and they could work on documents together remotely to get this through the system and send out for review and approval in, you know, just a, a matter of days as opposed to weeks and even months, you know, in our previous life. And then you know, one last point is it, it with a startup with a new facility and new staff and we're growing it and you're getting there, not only were we able to write the documents in the EQMS and move them forward while we were building, but then when it became time to have everybody read it, rather than running around saying, you know, hey, you know, Bob, you didn't read your paper yet and you haven't filled out the form, you know, click and literally people could go onto the system and complete their read and understand training. And we were, from the management perspective, able to see uh, how quickly 100% of the staff was done so that when it got time to, to perform that procedure or that it was time to now move into performance-based training, um, you, you had met all the prerequisites and you weren't creating uh, deviations by, um, you know, uh, putting the, you know, one part of training before the, the prerequisite had been met. Lovely. Lots of ways it helps. Ryan, I believe you have a short video for us next. Yes, indeed, here it comes. We didn't have a quality system already in place, so there wasn't necessarily anything to uh, benchmark off in terms of we had X, Y, Z processes needing a system that could map to our pre-existing um, processes at the time. So that, I suppose, gave me a bit of freedom and flexibility to be able to say, well, um, I can look for a uh, software solution uh, and utilize their inbuilt structures to then map out our process and procedures for um, requirements of the quality system. Okay, and we're back. Thank you. Um, so, in paper, SOPs are developed for document control, training, internal audits, management reviews, all of the things. Whereas in EQMS, you can utilize a pre-built structure and functionality, as well as templates um, from an EQMS vendor to continually refine your process and help you build those processes if you are a new um, startup. Um, so it helps you execute with digital auto automation. It can even seem um, quicker. Yeah. You know, Megan, we'll add one uh, one point to that. Sure. Um, you know, having the pre-built structure and templates uh, of some some other SOPs um, was really a really helpful feature uh, because you didn't have to reinvent the wheel. And it, there was a procedure already in the in the EQMS that served your purpose or it just required just some very minor changes to fit your operation. Uh, really, that was a huge advantage of the EQMS. Great. Glad to hear that. Um, and getting it right the first time, I think that's so important for a lot of us quality people. It is, can be so time consuming um, to implement a QMS. So to invest all that time and get it right the first time is really key. Um, while paper is instantly ready, it isn't really um, going to be as op operationally efficient in the long run. An EQMS will allow you to grow and scale um, and continually scale as you grow um, through your life cycle as a business. Anything to add there about getting it right the first time? 
Phil or Eric. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll say maybe not. It doesn't necessarily maybe apply. We get it right the first time, sure. but but get it approved the first time. Sure. <laughs> one of the things that was a real change for me was, as you can imagine, as one of the approvers of the documents, my job requires me to sometimes travel and be out of the office. And um, I was I was on a, a trip up to um, Columbus, which is only 150 miles north. And um, the person was driving, and I said to myself. I'll bet you I can approve these documents in the system if they're ready. And so actually while I was driving in a car, I managed to log on to the system, read the document, had no comments, and actually submitted for approval. Whereas in the old paper-based system, that would have been, I'd had to maybe wait till I got there, got done, went to the hotel, looked at that, and then come home two days later, sign it. So not necessarily right the first time, but uh, certainly um, expedited approval the first time. Lovely. Glad to hear that works so well for you. So um, an EQMS can also help with faster progress to market. Uh, medical device manufacturer NewFit realized their paper system was holding them back. Um, and after digitizing, they their speed tripled and they cut their aud regulatory audits by 5.5 days each, um, which I think Eric was talking about how much more efficient audits are in an EQMS. Ryan, would you be so kind as to play this video snippet for us? When, you're, when your entire focus is, did we follow the process and do we have all the paperwork and is it all properly signed and is it properly filed, you're not moving forward at all. You can't. I mean, now it's because everything is so streamlined, we are making progress. You know, we're finally talking about developing a, uh, bringing on another product and we're moving into design controls right now. And I don't know if that would be possible uh, if we didn't have Qualio. Great. Our other benefits include um, event management. Um, it may not be necessary, but quality events can be beneficial from day one, including NCRs, CAPAs, product issues. Um, should all be given maximum control and priority early in your business. And an EQMS gives you um, a mechanism for capturing new event data, learning from it, and managing to make quick proactive changes. So there's some other benefits there. Any last um, ideas on benefits that we can allude to here or illustrate here, Eric and Bill? We've talked about a lot of them. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm looking at your list here. I, I don't know if I have any others than the, other than what we've talked about so far. Great. Agreed. Cool. Well, what does it usually come down to? Cost. So let's go ahead and talk about cost when it comes to an EQMS, as this can be sometimes a gating decision. Um, so which is cheaper? I find this might be a quick, a trick question. Um, an EQ investment for a small startup life science business can cost anywhere from twelve thousand to thirty thousand a year. Um, is that much more expensive than paper? Um, if you're thinking about the infrastructure you need, like those fireproof safes and space and real estate in your business, um, those are things to think about and consider as well. So we have put together a little return on investment calculator. Um, and you can see the financial benefits of ditching these manual processes as quickly as you can, um, assuming an average salary of around 50000 for personnel attached to these processes. You know, and we'll make an interesting part on that is in, in terms of uh, costing, uh, in our previous places where we had worked, you know, the QA department, in addition to having your auditors and your coordinators, you also had a document control specialist whose only job it was was to maintain, you know, putting the thing, put the new issued SOPs out, bring the new ones back in, file it, and make copies of all that. If you think about it in terms of what a, an FTE for that position on a yearly basis might be, 30, 40, 50,000 or more with benefits, uh, it, it almost seems like a no brainer that uh, automating that process and having the ability to not at least have to have that person, uh, it, you know, really helps to uh, push the scale over to one side. Yes. And I think about the time saving on audits, whether you're, it's during internal audits or your regulatory audits, the time 
you say of streamlining that process too, I think that was another big savings there as well. Great. Right. So here's some more um, fun data. Um, and that was only for document management. Imagine how this costs stack up once you talk about manual training, event management, design controls if you're a medical device business. Other core quality processes um, often take way more time when they're managed through paper. So um, some of these figures, it means 10, 20, 30, even 50 to 60% time savings when you use a digitized process um, when using an EQMS. So it starts to pay for itself, I think, pretty quickly when you make that investment. Would you guys agree? Yeah, no, we, right. when you add it all together, it really, when you add that into also making sure that you have it right the first time, it, 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 it almost is a no-brainer in our opinion. What well, well, was a no-brainer in our opinion? Yeah. Great. And we hit on this a little bit earlier, um, but that time searching for things, day-to-day -day information, I found these statistics to be really interesting. You know, this people spend 50% of their time looking for something, and five to 10 to 15% actually using that information. Um, so having all that information digitized and searchable at your fingertips, I think, will really save time across the business. Not to mention also the, the ability to go and find that data quickly for the things like the, the regulatory submissions and the other things that you have to prepare to get your product in the clinic and to get your product in the market. Uh, again, it's, it's just, um, it's synergistic with the overall goal. Right, absolutely. And another way an EQMS saves money, um, or excuse me, right, the first time, going back to that idea, um, just as the most dangerous point of an airplane journey is the takeoff, your business will never be more fragile than its early startup and scale-up days. Embedding that control and visibility in the EQMS insulates your business from what could be a ca catastrophic end-of-life event. Could you lose 10% of those crucial early medical device sales? or spend half a million dollars on an unforeseen protocol change for your investigational product drug. Um, so just being able to be efficient and organized will save a lot of time and headaches in those early days and time and efficiency as well. And again, um, EQMS is going to save money um, in a few ways. So that headcount can be um, kept down. You won't need those document control specialists, a whole team of them to wrangle all of those binders. Um, accelerating your process and your route to market and freeing up non-value add time for continuous work and that continuous improvement. And I think the other thing that's really key that we haven't hit on yet is embracing that quality culture. And when that starts early, when you embrace an EQMS early, um, you can start embedding that quality culture early. So it helps accelerate that culture building from day one. It offers a trusted single source of truth where all people can go in the organization, whether it's startup or scale up phases and know where that information lives. New hires can understand the role and significance of quality immediately and everyone knows where to go for that information and where to find it. Think of all the time saved when everyone knows where to go and that information is right at their fingertips and searchable. And then it also helps keeping up with industry changes. The FDA um, is going to be running a voluntary quality surveillance program in the near future and whether or not your business takes part and whether or not you're a pharmaceutical oper operation, the structure of the program gives you a great idea of how the industry envis envisages a high quality organization and what you can do to regress beyond an Im immature compliance only approach. So having an EQMS is, helping, is gonna help you keep up with those industry changes and be flexible and adaptable as those changes come about. And then adoption to scale. 
Um, and with criteria being pushed by the FDA, we can see how adopting an AQMS as soon as possible will make scaling this maturity curve much easier. Another key reason to consider digitizing. Tracking your key metrics, building a centralized quality culture supported by everyone, and applying stats and analytics are things that are much more difficult with paper and spreadsheets. And as the industry goes further and further down this route, you give yourself the ability to keep up is crucial. I wonder in how many years we will still be asking if people use paper. So we have some resources that we'll be sharing um, in the chat. And I believe we'll be opening it up um, to some poll question or some questions here in a minute. And then here's some information on how to get a hold of us. Well, thank you very much for this wonderfully insightful presentation. Indeed, now we'd like to move on into our Q&A session. So I'd like to invite the audience to keep sending their questions or comments using the questions window. And we've already received some questions, so we will get ourselves started with those. Um, the very first question that I have for you here would like to know, um, based on the change control module, why should I choose Qualio? Ooh. Um, we have change control built in to our documents, um, and it makes it really easy to have it, that change control tied to each document change. Um, and you can customize that to meet the business needs that you have. So um, it's really easy to make that change control meet the needs of your organization. Eric and Bill, do you have any thoughts on how you found using change control in Qualio? I, I felt that, uh, again, when, when our staff was working uh, from home, uh, that made it so much easier because as we're growing, as we're developing and looking at our different procedures, uh, knowing that we can then, you know, if we need to make changes, we're able to do that right away into the system and, and we're con keeping track exactly why are we making this change, what's the impact, uh, and, and it just made it so much easier. We, you know, admittedly, we have some documents, they're probably already on version four or five, just because we've made changes over the last year, we know what, how we anticipated the procedure was going to look like in a new facility, and of course, once you move in, you know you need to make the changes, and the change control process just makes it so much easier. I think the only thing I would add to that is having having the ability to go back and look at the rationale uh, and the justifications for why you made the changes, whether or not they had any impact, and, and then what the the resolution of that was, as well as the ability to go back and look in a side by side manner of what was uh, an earlier version versus a later version. I think Quality does a really good job about you know, giving you the ability to look like, as Eric said, if we have four uh, four different versions, you can compare all the way back to the very first one, uh, even on five, and you can, it, it drills down in there and shows you, uh, you know, precisely uh, what, what changes were made. So we think that's a, a value add. Great, thank you. Yes, that's excellent. Thank you very much. Um, another question I have for you would like to know if there is any way to allow auditors to review EQMS records in Qualio remotely. Sure. Um, the way that I handle that um, as the manager of our quality system here at Qualio um, is through tags and permissions. So by creating a group for auditors, I can tag documents that I want them to see with that auditor tag make them part of that group and so that they can only see those documents tagged for auditors. So things like our policies and procedures, our quality manual, I can share those things while um, internal audit reports, things like that that I wouldn't share will remain um, where they won't be visible to that auditor. Um, so that's kind of my methodology. Do you use kind of a similar <laughs> tactic there, Eric? Exactly. Yeah, just creating that, that auditor group and then um, as long as they have internet connection, they can get into the yeah. Qualio because they're given permissions and then they can see exactly what, you know, what it is you've, you're giving them access to. I found that auditors really like this ability to see things, follow the strings, you know, if there's links, they can go follow that string from, you know, supplier management to internal audits, wherever they need to go. Um, so I find that really, the feedback I've gotten is that it's very helpful for our auditors. 
Very good, thank you very much. So for our next question, someone's asking, how does an EQMS investment fit around compliance hurdles like 510K submission? That's an interesting question. I think probably depends on the business and if they wanna take that one thing at a time approach or if they um, see value in going for that 510K and simultaneously um, setting up their procedures in the EQMS, um, which I have done that approach and find that it's, while it's a lot going on, it's a worthwhile endeavor to get that set up at the same time. Eric and Bill, any suggestions there? No. On I regulatory I yeah. I think you've covered it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an individual approach. I think it can be done um, if you have the right mindset and the right team to tackle the two things at the same time. Very good, thank you. So um, simply though, uh, could you expand on what kind of file types are compatible with uh, Qualio document management? Sure, um, we have an in-application editor, so you are able to write your policies and procedures directly into Qualio. You can also upload a various amount of different documents from PDFs, Word documents, Excel sheets. Um, I, I think I've even linked to videos. Um, I haven't really run into a file type yet that I've needed to attach that, that I couldn't. Um, Eric and Bill, any limitations you found or any um, strengths you found with being able to attach the items you need into your Qualio records? In terms of the strength, as we've, we've talked about, and you, you mentioned earlier with the different strings, uh, the auditors are able to, uh, you know, if they're looking example for a specific raw material and they're able to then click on the link which takes them to the c of a for that particular material so it uh, you know they don't have to try to thumb through different binders to find first the material and then look over here to find something else everything is right there uh, for them so we find that they're very happy with that very good, thank you. Um, I've got someone wondering if you can expand on how long an EQMS transition would take uh, to an all paper system, or sorry, from an all paper system. I think it really depends on the organization's appetite to make that implementation happen. Um, we see it typically around 60 to 90 days. Eric and Bill, um, what was your transition timeline like moving into Qualio? Uh, so we talked earlier about the validation process and wondering about the skills. And because the validation packet is supplied to you uh, through Qualio, I was able to do the validation myself. Uh, so we didn't need that dedicated IT team that, that normally does this type of work. Um, it, and, and as Meg mentioned, it, it really depends on, on you know, the person or persons that are doing that validation, for example, how much time? You know, obviously I had other deliverables as well, so I would do a, you know, some tests during the day, and then uh, maybe I had to put that off and come back to it, you know, a few days later. So for us personally, uh, the validation process probably took, I'd say, about three weeks, four weeks, uh, but in total from beginning to end, yeah, um, I would say probably we we had the same experience that Megan described. Roughly, you know, uh, from the start when Eric went ahead and started the validation to when we had the EQMS system up and running, uh, about maybe 60 to 90 days, there was a, a general um, learning period, if you will, as the staff transitioned over from how they always did it in paper to how they were going to do it now. Um, the, the, you know, it just was a matter of familiarity. And again, I think that goes to the appetite and how quickly you want to implement that. I would say certainly within maybe um, about a you know two to three weeks of, of this was how we were going to do it. Um, people just basically got into it and started adopting it, and then it really it blossomed after that. Once people got over that initial hump, um, you know, the ease at which they created things and moved them along uh, really accelerated. So uh, roughly maybe three months tops. Uh, if you're dedicated, you could probably do it faster. Um, on that, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Very good, thank you. Could you say that someone could still comply without an EQMS? Absolutely. Um, paper EQMS has been around for a very long time and has been compliant. Um, 
it can certainly still be compliant. Yeah, we, we agree with you on that, Meg. You can do it that way. That was our experience before joining the EQMS world. Now that we're in it, our question would be, why would you want to uh, with all the benefits that you have? Uh, you know, once, you, once, you, once we've gone this route, we'll never go back. I'm not going back to a rotary phone, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, excellent, thank you very much for those answers, for all of the answers. However, we have reached the end of the Q&A portion for this webinar. If we couldn't attend to your questions, the team at Qualio will follow up with you, or if you have some further questions, you can direct them to the email address that's on your screen. I want to thank everyone for participating in today's webinar. You will be receiving a follow-up email from Xtalks with access to the recorded archive for this event. A survey window will be popping up on your screen as you exit, and your participation is appreciated as it will help us to improve our webinars. Now, I've also sent you a link in the chat box, and with this link, you'll be able to view the recording of this event on this page, and you can also share this link with your colleagues when they register for the recording here as well. So I encourage you to do that. Now, please join me once more in thanking our speakers for their wonderful time here today. We hope that you all found the webinar informative. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.